In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint a Sister of Battle from the Order of Our Martyred Lady. I'm really excited for the new Sisters of Battle models, and I can't wait to show you how to paint them. If this is your first time on the channel, then please consider subscribing, and if you do, don't forget to hit the bell so you get notified of all my new videos. Let's get going with this Sister of Battle. I'm really excited for this. Absolutely love the new models. They are fantastic. So we've undercoated with Chaos Black Spray. Again, use whatever black primer you want. And I've just taken some of and Black, watered it down, and run it all over the model. So first thing we're going to paint, I'm going to use Mephisto and Red. We're going to get the outside of the habit done. So I'll turn it around because uh, it's easier to see a lot more on the back. So we're just going to work this Mephisto and Red all over the habits we've got the bit on the back here and you can see that it's going on fairly well you will need two coats of this so just take your time and work your way around we've also got the sleeves as well so don't forget those just work your way all the way around the model and then once you've finished the first coat give it a second one We'll come back and we'll start to uh, start to shade it and then highlight the cloth. Once you've got those two coats of Mephisto and Red, we need to uh, shade this down a little bit. So the colour I'm going to use for shading it down is going to be Flesh Terrors Red, which is a contrast paint. It's quite thick, so if you want to thin it, you can. But all I'm going to do is paint it straight into some of these recesses and don't worry too much if you spill it over and get it on some of the raised areas because what you can always do is go in and tidy it up afterwards so just paint it in there wait for it to dry and then we can go back in and we'll start to highlight back up so I've already done the arms on the front of the habit. Let's work it around the buttons there. So let the dry, we'll come back and we'll start to highlight. So if you need to, once that flesh tear is red is dried, then go back with some fist of red and just tidy up some of the uh, some of the cloak where you need to, if perhaps you haven't quite got it all the way in the depth. So we're going to start highlighting, and we're going to use Evil Sun Scarlet. So this is uh, a pretty straightforward edge highlight, highlighting, excuse me. Um, we're just going to work our way and follow the kind of the edges of all the the robe, just like that. As that dries, you'll start to see that you're getting a really nice, really nice red highlight. It's fairly soft at this point as well, which is what you want for material. You don't want a, a hard a bright orange highlight because that'll take away from the material nature of the of the habit so just work your way around all these sharp edges and once you're happy that you've got everything let it all dry we'll come back we'll just pop one more highlight on there next color i'm going to use is squig orange and we just want to put a really fine highlight of this uh, along the edges of the habit and just in the the central areas here we want to make sure that any lines we draw with this are going to be really thin because this is the absolute extreme highlight that we're gonna have on the red cloth so just take your time with that work it in where you want it if you go a little thick you can always just go and correct it using either the Evil Sun Scarlet or the Mephiston Red underneath. So there we are, I'm happy with that. So make sure that's all dry, make sure I haven't missed anything, come back and we'll do the inside of the habit next. For the inside of the habit, I'm going to base that with Screamer Pink. 
So when you're doing this, just be really careful that you don't go over any of the kind of red bits you've already done. Don't worry too much if you do go over the black armour, because what we'll do before we paint that, we'll go in and just tidy that up a little bit. So you can see there that actually that's gone on. It's gone on okay, but it is going to need a second coat. So just let that dry and then go ahead and add that second coat. There's a fold here. Where the habit's folded out over the red bit. And then we've just got this bit here as well. And don't forget the inside of the arms as well. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the screen of pink. Wait for it to dry and then I'm going to give it a second coat and then we'll come back and we'll shade and highlight it all. Once our scream of pink is dry, I just want to give it a little bit of a shade. So I'm going to take some null oil. I'm going to work this into the, the darker kind of recesses, moving the brush and finishing the brush at the bottom. And by doing that, you're going to bring all the null oil towards the bottom. So get the whole thing. Just be careful when you apply it as well. You don't want to put a load in because you don't want it to to pull because it'll just look a little bit off and make it much more difficult to do the highlighting. So whilst we've got nice subtlety across all the red, we'd lose it over the screen of pink if we let the null oil kind of settle too much. So let that dry. If you need to put a little bit more on, then feel free to go in and put a little bit more on. We'll come back and we'll, we'll highlight it a bit. So that nice bit of shading done, the first thing I do is just take a little bit of Scream of Pink and just kind of re-establish it in some of those areas where it may have got a bit dark. So as you see there, I'm not putting too much on at all. Just work it quietly in. So that's that bit done. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some pink horror. I'm going to use that as a, an extreme highlight. But with the pink horror, I don't want too much on my brush at all. I'm just going to edge it a little bit in there. Just to give it a little bit of a, a light. Uh, and that's working quite nicely. So work your way around the model, just get those last few lights done. And that's the habit complete. So next up we'll have a little look at doing some of the, the leather before we go on to the metallics. And the last thing we'll do is the black armour. So for painting the leather we're going to start off with a base coat of a dryer bark. And this is pretty straightforward, just going to work it over all the leather bits, being really careful when we come to the parts that we've already finished, such as the red habit. This is a really straightforward part of the model, but it is really important you take your time. Don't forget to get the holster painted as well. Now there might be some places, when you're going over the black, it'll probably cover quite well. When you're going to paint over some red parts, for example, you may need to just give it two coats. So take your time, work your way around, get that done, and we'll come back and start highlighting it. This highlight, we're gonna use Doom Ball Brown. And we're just gonna put this as kind of like a, a thick edge highlight on the leather where we're leaving the Rhinox hide in the in the recesses. So just take your time, work your way around. I think looking at this, I've probably watered it down a little bit too much, so I'll let it dry. You might have to do another another coat, we'll see. So just take your time, especially when you're on these parts where you've already got the red. And when it's dry, we'll come back and we'll put a final highlight on it as well. Now 
The last highlight we're going to do on the leather, we can take some scrag brown, which again jumps out as a much brighter brown until it kind of starts to dry. So just want to take your time with a good point on your brush and just highlight the edges of the of the leather. So then we are work your way around. Once you're happy with all of that, like I am there, we can just go on and we'll uh, we'll do the metallics next. We'll start with the silver, then we'll do the gold. For the silver metallic, we'll start off with a base of lead belcher. Now this isn't particularly uh, great for people to watch, so uh, we'll just work our way around. So we've got the bolt gun here, so we want to paint all of the bolt gun. Make sure that the paint doesn't go on too lumpy. So you can see that once I start spreading it out, it does streak a little. No, that's fine, we'll just we'll go in, we'll give it a second coat. Don't worry too much if we get it all this icon because it's easy enough to paint over. So we've got the weapon. Uh, we've got the chainsaw as well, so we can paint all of this. Again, nice and straightforward. Make sure you spread it out so that there's no uh, lumpiness in it. And we'll go back. We can always do a second coat afterwards. Uh, in terms of some of the other areas, I'll just work my way around them quickly. So we've got these beads here, which I think will look good as metal. So let's work them. Don't worry if you spill over too much. We've got this tube in here. Just work that in. And then on the backpack, we've got these parts around the the balls and we've also got the exhausts in there so there we are. I'm going to work around the rest of the model now getting all the other silver done uh, and if I need to do a second coat I will but apart from that get yourself going enjoy it we'll come back and we'll shade and then highlight it metallic shaded then so I'm going to shade them with two tones so we're going to use null oil on the lower part and on the gun workings itself this is just following the box art uh, it's got a kind of a different coloration and on the sword chain sword we're going to do the teeth the handle and the uh, exhaust here with black and then what I'm also going to do is for the gun casing I'm going to wash that with our Grax Earth Shade because um, if you look at the box art it's, the case has got a brown tint to it which we'll get quite simply by using the Agrax Earth Shade on the casing so take your time doing that and the same thing on the chainsaw, just on the casing, we're going to give it the, the Agrax Earth Shade. Now, really important that you don't let this pool, so just keep an eye on it as it dries. Try not to put it on too thick. Let that dry, and we'll come back, and then we'll highlight the metallics. Highlighting the metal is really straightforward, so you just want to take some chrome from Vallejo Model Air. And on the chainsaw, we're just going to run it along the edge and along the back edge there you can see it's not quite uh, quite dry so I'm being a bit naughty there um, but it's okay so we want the edge along there as well and then when it comes to the bolt gun again the same thing where we just want to take the edge and run the the chrome over it just to pick up and get a nice highlight so I'm going to work my way around the rest you can too then we come back we'll start the gold
with all those silver highlights done, we'll get the gold done as well. So take some Retributor armor. I'm just going to work this around all the bits that are going to be gold. And if you're not sure which bits they are, just check on the box art. Now, when gold is going straight over black, it can need a couple of coats. So just take your time and then go back over it as and when you need to. So we've got these, um, I suppose the Inquisition symbols, aren't they? On here, we've got the pommel on the sword, and then we've also got these bits here on the weapons. Let's just work the gold on, try and not to get any on the silver. Got these tokens, these charms on the end of the bolt gun. And we've also got the symbols on the on the backpack there. So I'm gonna work my way around, make sure that I get all the little bits of gold done. And we'll come back, we'll shade it, and then we will highlight it. Shading the gold is really easy. So just take some right clean flesh shade and just work this all over the gold bits that you've just undercoated. Take your time not to get any on bits you've already painted. And once you finish that off, just let it dry. And we'll go back in and highlight it. Simple. Make sure that right clean flesh shade is dry before we highlight the gold. And the highlight colour we're going to use is Liberator Gold. So where we've got hard edges, we just want to draw the brush along them, nice and straightforward. Take your time doing this bit, because you don't want to get the liberated gold on any of the bits you've already painted. Um, and you just want to be a little sympathetic as well to covering the entirety of the model or entirety of the gold bits that you worked on. So that's quite nice and straightforward. Easy peasy. The last thing I'll do on there is just on the absolute edges is just take some of that chrome and then what we're going to do with the chrome we're just going to pop it on those extreme corners just for Bit of an extreme highlight where the light might catch. Nice and straightforward. There we are, that's the gold done. So next up we'll have a look at doing the white parts. So we've got the the wings, the fleur de -lis on the knee, and then the fleur de -lis on the other shoulder pad, and then we'll do the black armor. So I want to base these bits. Now I'm gonna do that using Celestra Grey. So you don't want to get too much on your brush because you don't want it to swamp the the model but just work it on quietly take your time as it dries and starts to develop you'll notice that you may need to do another coat in some places which isn't an issue it's just a question of taking your time make sure it's dry before you try and do that second coat because if it's not, then you'll end up pulling paint off and leaving it a little little lumpy. So just take your time. And don't forget, we're going to do the other fleur de lis this way as well. So we've got the one on the knee, so I'll just show you that one. So they're quite small. So just take your time. I'm not flooding it with paint. And the reason for that is that it makes it easier, quicker to paint it in the in the long run because essentially the black underneath provides the shadow between the different bits. So I'm going to finish off that shoulder, I'll do the other fleur de lis, come back and we'll highlight it. So we're just going to put the one highlight onto that Celestra Grey and we're going to use White Scar. Really important that you've got a good tip on your brush for this bit. 
And what we're going to do is we're just going to highlight the wings. Nice and straightforward, take your time. Maybe that you need to do a second coat. And if you do, that's fine. Just work your way around. And then if you go over the edge, it's not too much of an issue because you can just go back in, clear it up with, uh, with some ad a bad and black. So I'm going to finish off the rest of the wings and we'll come back. Um, and I think we'll make a start on the black armour. Get into the black armour then. The first thing you need to do is make sure that it, there's no overspill on the armour. So go around it, check it all out with some bad and black and just get it all back to how it should be. And then the first highlight we're going to do on the black armour is going to be Inky by Darkness. So this can be a fairly chunky highlight and what we'll do is we'll refine it down a bit with subsequent highlights so what you're doing is you're looking for all those edges of the armor just take your time and work it on where you can use the use the edge of the power armor so on the knee for example you can just run it over the top there and on the knee itself just got a kind of a circular highlight there so work your way around all the black power armor leave the corset we're going to, and the gloves we'll do them slightly differently because it's uh even though it's black in color it's a different kind of material so obviously the armor is quite a hard material whereas the corset and the gloves are leather so it's a softer material so we want to kind of take that into account in our painting and our colour choice. So work your way around. I'm going to do that off camera, we'll come back, we'll have a look at the next highlight colour. When you finish working your way around with the Dark Reaper, we're going to then take some Thunderhawk Blue and we're just going to go over those areas that we've done the Dark Reaper. Again using the shape of the plastic to work for us. What we want to try and do is just make a thinner line using the point of the brush. And this will kind of give you that much crisper highlight using the Thunderhawk blue. Don't worry if it seems too stark. What we'll do is once we've finished all the highlighting, we'll have a look at how it looks and then we make a call and if we need to push it back a little bit by putting a little glaze over it then that's what we'll do and I'll show you how to do that really easy really straightforward but for now just work your way around those parts of the model where you've already put the the highlight and then we'll come back and do one more before we consider whether or not we need to to pull it back a little Last highlight then for the black armour is Fenrisian Grey. Now you want to use this really sparingly because it is so much brighter than the, the other colours. So just take your time, you want a nice point on your brush and just work it into those brightest parts, those brightest areas. Working it around the model. Take your time. And if you do put what you feel is too much on, you can always go back and, and correct that easily enough. So there you are. I'm just going to go around now and find any other bits where I think the extreme highlight will work. And then that's the black armour done. We'll move on to the black material next. Moving on to the black material. We're going to use some Skaven Blight Dinge. As the first highlight so this we've got the corset here so just want to work around there and you can see straight away that it's a different or gives a different shade on the 
on the model. And we've also got the gloves. So don't forget to highlight those and all the fingers. Just take your time, work your way around. Nice and straightforward, nice and simple. So once you've finished all that, we'll come back and we'll give it another highlight. After the Skaven Blight Dinge is done, take some Storm Vermin Fur. And we just really want to put some extreme highlights using this. So a good point on your brush. And just work it into the... areas where you want the the highlight to be and that'll just give you a nice bit of shine work on the figures and the glove and once you finish this stage there's only one bit left on the the battle sister and that's all the studs so once you've gone round you've highlighted the gloves how you like Come back, we'll come back and we'll get that last bit of the battle sister done. There are lots of studs all over this model, um, so take your time doing this. It is really straightforward, it is really easy, but just take your time. So, I'm going to take some chrome from Vallejo Model Air and I'm going to just touch it against every stud being careful not to overspill so as you can see this is just a one of those patience things where you need to take your time because if you rush you'll end up getting chrome where you don't want it It's good to make sure you haven't got too much on the brush, but you do need a, a decent amount so that you can kind of just touch that stud and move away. So you can see there, I put a bit too much on, so I'm going to clean my brush off. And I'm just going to quickly wick away the mistake I've made. So if you need to go in with one of the reds to, to tidy that properly, you can. You've got all the studs done there, so I'm going to work my way around. I'm going to do this off cam. We'll come back and we'll have the finished Sister of Battle. Now, you may be wondering about the head. I'll do that in a separate video, and I'll put a link to that right at the end of this one so you can see how I did that. Um, so watch this one, finish off, and there'll be a link to the head and the final model. There we have it, this Sister of Battle from the Order of Our Martyred Lady is complete. I really hope you've enjoyed the video, I really enjoyed making it, and I think the models turned out great. I can't wait to paint the rest of them. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a like and a comment down below, and don't forget if you do want to support me and the channel, then you can do so by using some of the affiliate links in the description. Now, I do get a small kickback from that, but it doesn't actually cost you any more money. So Christmas is coming, get on Amazon, get on Goblin Gaming for 20% off all your wargaming. It really does help the channel. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.